How's it going people? Welcome back to AFTV and welcome back to the last full-time show of the season. It really is full-time. That's it the is. last... How's it going <laughs> it people? Wow. That's the last one for the full-time. What is it? I think we... Uh, no, we'll get it, we'll get it again, but for full-time yeah. and, and you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Oh, true. Legendary. Wait till yeah. week three of next season, we'll already be sick of it. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh three, three defeats on the bounce. Oh, yeah, don't that'd be even tricky. get me started about next yeah. season. We've still got a lot to talk about, about this one just gone. Yeah, no, no, And the so. summer red. Mm. Yeah, lots to talk about, but um, yeah, hey, we won today. Yeah. I guess there's that. That's good. Um, the protest, yeah, lots to talk about. Yeah, five wins in a row. It's positive. Oh god, here we go. <laughs> it's positive. I know it's too. Listen, come on, man. A little bit of a smile. Come on, you gotta be happy about that. It no. is what it is. Oh. It, it is, is what, it, what is. it is. That's all I can really say about this season, today's game, mm. and being an Arsenal fan right now, yeah, yeah. and the protest today. Let's start with the protest today. I think. You know, we was all there. It's a good place to start. I was there quite early. Um, and you know what, first and foremost, I want to say respect to everyone that did turn up. Yeah. There was a lot of people that, you know, came from all over the gap, oh. Wales, Scotland, you said Eastbourne, Eastbourne, Hastings and so on. So yeah. respect to everyone that made the trip short or far, um, because it's necessary. This is necessary. It just needs to be bigger and better. It was nothing in comparison to the one a couple of weeks ago, yeah. but I won't dwell on that too much. I tried to do something a couple of years ago and this in comparison to that, it, this is amazing. Yeah. So it just depends on how you're looking at it. At the end of the day, fans are very fickle and over the last few weeks, especially with Kronke turning down that bid from Daniel Lek, it's, you know, put a lot of fans back in that mood of blind support again. Mm. Why do you think this one was so small in comparison to the last. I thought this was going to be huge. So did I. I really did. I thought it was going to be the same numbers, if not more, um, on the back of what's happened with Villarreal, on the back of X-Bid, on the back of the fact that Kroenke was actually there today. Yeah. Like, mm. yeah, I was, I was kind of a bit confused. Look, a, again, uh, credit to everyone who turned up. Yeah, you've got to also say on top of that, so to cut you as well, that obviously there was 10,000 fans in the stadium. You would have thought more would have at least come round the corner yeah. and, and joined us before before arriving and going to the ground. And I was I was quite shocked at how there was still a lot like you said at the beginning, a lot of people there and fair play they travelled far. But I was quite shocked at the numbers of how small it was. But the people that were there did have a lot to say. It was very loud. They made their voices heard. They went up they went through the barricade, went up and put the Cronke um, banner hanging off the, the edge of the edge of the um, on top of the armory. So I mean they made, it was effective, but I was, just, I was disappointed there wasn't as much as the first one. So, yeah, and to answer your question, James, I don't know. A mix of the weather, I guess, yeah. which is a poor excuse. Do you think people are tired? People are just like, just end it now. I don't know how they could say they're tired. I've been banging on this drum and fighting this battle for years, and yeah. I will continue. Yet you'll have some people who've only been involved in this battle a few weeks. Yeah, since yeah. the Super League. Oh, exhausted. Yeah, yeah. thinking, you know, the summer transfer window's Still here, here now. Still here, is he? Oh, God. It's, a, it's very yeah. much a mentality of the season's over. Yeah. It's a clean slate. That's how a lot of fans look yeah. at it, but it's not a clean slate. No, it's not. It's a dirty, stinking rotten slate we're given at the start of every window yeah. mm. but there is no excuse for the numbers today as disappointing yeah. as it was I do want to leave leave it with respect to everyone that did show up I, I hear that I hear that because it's a big thing I can't lie it's a big thing to show up and a lot of people there talking to them felt demoralized yeah and that's that I'm completely against that because we're going to need those people that came today again in the future yep you yeah. know, people laughed at the initial one I did a couple of years ago because it was only about 30, 40 people. But the 30, mm. 40 people that was there, I saw them all there two, three weeks ago mm -hmm. after the Super League. I saw them, most of them there today, mm -hmm. you know. So it's about building upon the people that actually have the energy, yeah. the love to come mm -hmm. out and take time really out of their point. day, their lives yeah. to actually do this. Because it is, you know, time is money. Yeah. Money is time, you know. At the end of the day, a lot of people want to spend their time with family. Yeah. Want to do other things that mean more mm. than just football. But every yeah. so often we need to do this for the club, we have to. And on that, just do say that there will be more. There will definitely be more. Um, we know the Cronkays are still not going to sell. So we need to keep putting pressure on them. So be aware of people that are watching and people that could make it today. There'll be more chances, but please join us when these protests are arranged because it, it has an effect. It's proven this season that fans have the power. There's been so many changes. Chelsea are now being brought into board meetings. The Super League got shut down within what, a week. So we do have power. So we need everyone to come Listen, on board. Listen, it's chess. Yes. I remember a few weeks ago I said 
I'm expecting in the next couple of weeks Burkamp to come out, Vieira to come out because we heard from Henri. And what's actually happened? It's drip feeding mm. the pressure in a sense. Mm. And I get that. And I know a lot of people have said that Ek needs to be a bit more open. It's a lot of buzzwords, a lot of... Um, I've seen it on Twitter. And I do understand that too. But at the same time, the way Kronke has been playing it so far, I think it's a chess game that's needed. It's not... We can't go in with a batting ram and expect an owner like Kronke to give in. Mm-hmm. You know, I think if, if he went in with that approach or anyone went in that, with that sort of approach, like Usmanov pretty much did. Usmanov was like, here's the money, yeah. over the odds, take it. Yeah. That was the battering ram approach and it was shunned mm. and Usmanov didn't have much left in him, you know? Mm. Yeah. So it's a chess game. We're part of that chess game, you know? I, w- I wouldn't say I feel like a pawn in this chess game at the moment. Mm. I actually feel side by side with some of these invincibles on Riviera yeah. Burkamp and Eck mm. at the moment mm-hmm. because I'm hearing good things I've heard good things before yeah been let down but yeah. this time it's a new dawn let's say and I'm hoping for the best yeah mm. I hear that agreed we uh we did make it into the ground um yeah. Tessa and I are very lucky to be there that for me there's kind of like three kind of stories playing out here there's the protest and the cronky out movement there's the return of football fans after the pandemic and then there's the race for seventh in the, the Conference League. <laughs> um, on that kind of second chapter there, this whole, the fans being back, I, I mean, it, I've got to say it was amazing. You said you thought I was drunk. <laughs> I came back yeah. and you thought, because I, I, I just had this buzz. And it was just this sense of like, well, try and not be too cringe about it, but you stop for a second and you're like, wow, there's been a pandemic that's taken lives for the last year and a half, bit more, bit less, mm. whatever. Um, and what that did, that took people away from their families, their communities. It's quite literally taken people away permanently. Um, it's been an incredibly difficult situation for a lot of people in lots of different ways. Even those who never lost anyone who lived in the big house, it still took something from them, even if it was, you know, infinitely smaller. Everyone sort of suffered in some way. And we were all there and we walked through the turnstiles and we got in and I'm thinking, I'm like, we're, we're back in the Emirates and there's 10,000 fans and there's like noise and there's Arsenal today were at best hoping, or not hoping, but at best we're going to finish seventh in the Conference League. And they came out, the players, and I'll be honest, in a very kind of, uh, if you take the emotion out of it, really, the players probably could have been booed onto the pitch. Yeah, well, I was going to ask you what the mood was like. There could have been a bit of a silence, been, yeah. a bit of a kind of like, yeah, we're here. But when you're there, but the thing is, we're not robots, we're human and the players are human and nostalgia plays a part in emotion. We love the club and you don't love the club less because they finished seventh. You know, you still love the club and you were there and the players came out and there was just a roar for the players. Everyone was so excited, so happy to have them back, singing songs. Poor um, Sanchez in the Brighton goal. People were just thinking he was just a shit Matt Ryan. <laughs> and, it was, and it was quality. Was and everyone loved it. They're like, oh, that's great. Let's get on board with it. And, you know, and, then, and then the players took the knee and everyone got up and clapped. That was, that was a moving. moment. That was a moment. The whole thing I found very moving. And for so a second... <laughs> no, but I just... The, the whole kind of... It's the nostalgia of it. That, it's not that I'm yeah. not sold. It's that everything James has described right now is a sense of normality returning. Yeah. A sense of nostalgia, being back in the stadium, being back where you haven't been for a year and a half. More so than anything else. It's the vibes. Yeah. That's that's, that's what it was. And this is also, I get it today, but it's also played a part in where the club is now in terms of people making the trip to Emirates. And I'm not saying you did that. No, of course And I think today I understand it completely. Yeah. But what I failed to understand is, let's say, the start of you know, the season before with Unai Emery and then the Wengers mm. before that, why fans would be going and treating it as a day out more so than going to you know, yeah. fully mm. back your club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. You know? But I completely understand today. and It's to, not that I'm not sold no, on it. No, no, I, I, no, I'm, it brings just... me back to them thoughts of... Like, you know, no, and there's definitely an element of that of the protest wasn't as big as we wanted. Josh Kroenke was there. Did we really make our message heard or did we all just enjoy a day out of the Arsenal? But I think just in the extreme circumstances of a pandemic, at the very end, they, they invited the fans to stay. The players came out and thanked us and they, they reeled off a list on the, on the screens of the people who'd lost their lives yeah. you know, since we were in the stadium. And, 
you know, bless R.I.P. Claude's name was there as well. Yeah. And the whole thing was just incredibly like, I don't know, just a, a slight reminder that there's bigger things in football and kind of, you know, there has been a pandemic, there's been a lot of stuff going on. Um, but at the same time, you know, fans should come away with just almost a reminder of why we love the club and why we're fighting for new ownership and why we want them to do better. And I'm hoping, if anything, your Mikel Arteta's, your Edu's, Josh Kroenke was there. And it's quite clear Josh Kroenke runs a club. It's not Stan, it's Josh. Mm-hmm. I hope they all left with a sense of like, what we did as fans, that emotion, that kind of like excitement of being back. I know I'm asking a lot here, but I hope they come away from it thinking, yeah, there's a, there's a fucking great club here. You want the truth? Let's. They're yeah. not, they're, I don't think they will. I'm going to be honest. I, I'm split down the middle because I, I hear that. I hear your side heavily and it, everything James said was, was right. The nostalgia, the vibes, the energy and everything just felt, because it's been so long, it felt good to be there. I was slightly disappointed that the Cronke message wasn't echoed around the ground as much. We had the, we had the flyers as we came through the tunnel before the ground for the protest said Cronke. A lot of people did have them. At the start of the game, there was a Cronke out shout but it died down pretty quick. And then towards the end of the game, after the final whistle, that's when it started singing. The rest was more chance throughout the game, which is fine. But I've, I would have hoped as a whole, and yes, we did say it, we, we were singing. We were trying to get the Cronkay message out, especially when he's in the ground, Josh Cronkay. So when he goes back to Stan, or when yeah. he goes back to his business advisor, he says, you know what? They're, they're, not, they're not happy. They're not happy with us. But I don't yeah, think I he, he wouldn't have, he, after watching the game and being at the ground today, He's not getting that message. I don't think today did much good for the Cronky Out movement, if I'm honest. I was going to ask you, like, that's what the, the chance the were like. In but I'm that's talking protest, match. That's the truth. Performance of the team. <laughs> like, I, I don't think any of it has will have done t- enough to, to help the No, nah. help the going to be completely on snap. They, he, he's honest. going home on his jet. It's, it's calm. He's going back to Stan. Listen, a couple big signings. We'll get him back on site. And it hurts me mm. because I hate that they play on our naivety and, and our emotions. On, and games like this when we're winning to think, yeah, it's fine because it's not and it's annoying, but it's just a split. It's just yeah, a split of emotions. But I don't want to, and this is, when something hurts you in life, when something bothers you, you can kind of constantly fixate on it or you can look at kind of other things. And that doesn't mean you should ignore the problems, but I just think today, if I'm kind of applying that logic to this, I could have sat there and chanted the whole time Cronky out and wherever I wanted towards Josh and I could have just basically been miserable about the season we've had. Or I could have just been happy and excited that we were back in ground just for today, just for today. Mm. And then we go again on our shows, on our platforms, pre-season, when we're back in the stadium again. We don't let up, but I just, for the bigger picture of the pandemic um, and what's been going on, I was just, I was just so happy to see fans back, if I'm honest. And it did feel good. Do you think you'd feel the same way in terms of being accepting of what you just said if you wasn't in the majority in that stadium? What, what do you mean, sorry? What do you mean? So let's say I gave you a scenario and I said, listen, before the game, there's going to be 10,000 fans there, 9,000 of those fans are going to be unhappy, restless, and they're going there to send a message to Kronke. Oh, Kronke's here as well. Even better. Mm. Now, if that was the vibe, knowing you and knowing you, Changes. you would have been involved in that because I know yeah, how you true. feel about the club. It's just that when the vibe is, you look around and people really don't give a shit, yeah, like they should, mm. and it's like, oh, it's a nice day out and stuff like that. That's why it's so difficult because I understand it. It's so easy to like fall into the pattern and just, just love, you know? It's just so easy to just do that without thinking the damage it might cause because I get it. Last day of the season, it is nice, you know, you've got a chance to go back. But on my side of things, it's terrible because like you said, it didn't do that movement mm. that I'm so, mm-hmm. you know, staunch oh, I agree. I'm with, I'm with you any that. progress, any good. Mm. And I just wish, number one, the protest should have been bigger. Yeah. You know, and that would have probably seeped into the mm. stadium. I wish as well, to, bro, I'm with you. Bro, I'm with you. I was, so when we were singing all, from, I was screaming it as well, bro, but there's not... Like you said, when it's the majority and they're not, they're not, let's not say, everyone's let's singing, say the hard. match, you know, the protest we had before Everton. Mm. Let's say it was that sort of a protest, you know, fans in the stadium would have been yeah. off the back of yeah. that. Yeah. And it would have been felt more. Mm. It's just that it's come to the close of the season, we're out of everything, you know, Cronkite's turned down a bid from Eck. It's a lot of deflation I'm seeing. Mm. Yeah, and actually just being back at the Emirates, I think, was was just a, a, a happy something yeah. to hold on but to. But now, now, now don't ever get to, now you're talking about the Emirates and that, it does like mm. make me miss it. 
yeah, because course, it yeah. was a part of my life. So yeah, like mm. twice a week, to, I mean, well, mm. home and away. But yeah. mm. so in that sense, I get it. You know, it'll be nice for me to walk through the gates again yeah, and you know, yeah. walk to my yeah, seat yeah. and yeah, just yeah. have that, the, you know, the smell, the atmosphere. The, yeah. But yeah, yeah, I just keep on going back to. I, I hear that. I hear yeah. that. But we'll talk about the game because it was yeah, 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 yeah. it was actually a, de- oh, a decent game from it, Arsenal again. You know, no pressure, FC. It, it was um, it was nice to hear crowds, you know, cheer a goal. Yeah. Um, I thought Pepe is the obvious place to start. He was he was brilliant, and like I, I kind of said some stuff with my chest this week. It's been all over kind of AFTV social media about how he's been our best player since January. How. I really think he started to hit the ground running. He's, he's clinical. He's making the right decisions. Again, today, two chances, two goals. Um, I want to show some stats from his last three Premier League starts. This yeah. is West Brom. Who did we play the other day? Palace. Mm-hmm. And today against Brighton. OK, all right, it is West Brom, Palace and Brighton. Um, but in kind of their own ways, can be difficult size to play at times. He had nine shots in those three games. Six of them were on target. And mm-hmm. he scored five goals from them. You know, that's what I mean when I say clinical. Mm. Doesn't need many chances. He's taking them when he gets them. He attempted 16 take-ons, something I'm seeing him add more to his game, the ability to go around his man, drop it. Sometimes he overdoes it, but he's dropping the shoulder. He, he looks trickier. Yeah. He looks, the, the, the second goal against Palace and the second goal against Brighton, where he's just running and you're thinking, no one's going to stop him here because they're going to bring him down. Yeah. It's going to be a penalty. And you just saw him drive into the area he wants to get into and then slot it away. We've won all three of those games where we scored eight goals and he scored five of them. Look, yeah, okay, let's not get too excited about it because ultimately we're only eighth, the season's over. And Pepe, I think it's fair to say, overall hasn't had the season that we hoped for him. But the second half has definitely been a lot better and uh, I thought he was superb against Brighton. I want to ask Cecil, does Pepe start right wing for you first game of next season? Great question. Yeah. yeah. On merit of what... what how that, does that put Saka left wing then? Yeah, we've got to keep Saka in. Definitely keep Saka in. So they put left wing um, okay. and Smith Rowe, I'm assuming Odegaard's going to probably return back to Real Madrid. Um, so Smith Rowe in there, unless we get a, a new signing in, in the summer as a creator. Oh, we're uh, heavily linked to Buendia, who is often on the right, but I actually see him more as someone who can operate in the middle. Agreed, so, so do I. I see, so man. do I. So yeah, so that will be, I, I believe off the back of, yeah, off the back of his performances going into the end of the season, Pepe deserves it. And I think that's what he's, he's been neglected from. Being playing really well and then being dropped. And I think going into next season, whether I tell, oh, he's going to still be there. I think he needs to make a decision now and say, you know what, you've earned your right to be, to be in the squad. I've, I've <laughs> say it all the time, being very critical. Apologise. I can, I can admit when I'm wrong at times, Pepe, Turned, turned around the corner, he's, he's on, been on great form towards the end of the season. Whether that's due to the pressure being off, maybe, maybe not. Um, and, and yeah, the pressure being off, I think that's why he's, he's kind of stepped up. But yeah, big up Pepe, he definitely deserves, deserves to start it next season. And I've been impressed, even, even today, when we watched him, there was, a chance, there was a moment when he was in the corner of the pitch, when Brighton on attack, there was two men around him, and he, how he got out of that, was, was mental. We put it between them and yeah, got rid of. Yeah, I remember his, he was yeah. defending. He, he yeah. came back to his defensive duty, slipped round, knocked round into and Partey, well, yeah. and you're like, "Yeah, he's that's 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 More confidence." That. Mm. Um, and actually, you, you mentioned does he start on the right, Pe- uh, Pepe on the right, Saka on the left? Listen, what happened to mixing it up? Yeah, yeah he's good on the left. Why don't they switch as well? That's, that's yeah, the good thing about them. Used to do that mm. all the time. That's the good thing about them too. They can do it yeah. and. One, you know, what happened to feeling it out the first 10, 20 minutes? Mm. You know, I'll play a bit on the right, let it go to the left to see what their yeah. right back's saying. He, Pepe, in the last five months, has convinced me that if Arsenal are to get top four one day, if Arsenal are to challenge for the Premier League one day, uh, he can definitely be a part of that team. Mm. Definitely. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. that's that. what I've learned from the last... Not, not that he's a good player, but you know what? If 30 million comes in, you sell, you replenish, you go again... No, I actually think you, you keep Pepe because it's very hard to find players that clinical. He's not someone we have to we have to move on from a lot, and he's not one of them. Yeah, agreed. yeah, I think I've, off the back of the season, definitely. He's, he's when when around good players and a run of games, I think he'll thrive. His decision making has been questionable at times. He is the most frustrating player I think in the Arsenal yeah. squad, in my opinion. However, there's definitely brilliance in there. There's technical ability higher than most in the cl- in the squad. So. Yeah, I, I would like to see more of him next season. I really would. Nasty, me yeah. completely changing. I don't. I don't want this season. Budget. Sorry, I want the season to end because it's been just terrible. Yeah. But actually, the one person I don't want it to end it for, I don't want it to end for, is Pepe because yeah. he's in better form than ever, and I kind of want to just 
I want to see him play next week again, a week after. We, but, you know, maybe this break will do him some good. There's an argument for big games. Does he turn up for big games? Now, it, it annoys me because I hear fans saying it's like, he, I've said it as well, he's inconsistent in big games. He's not always the one showing. But is that because he's not playing in the big games? He hasn't or had is much that... consistency here. So, right. yeah. you know, Hard to I can't know. judge him mm. yet on that. I mm. remember off the top of my scored against United. Like, yeah. I can't remember much more, but at the same time, I can't guarantee how many he's played 90 minutes. FA Cup yeah, final exactly. and semi final, thought he was good in those oh, yeah, games. Yeah, 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 he was, especially the final, yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The final, I thought he was brilliant. Listen, well. next season's massive because all this talk this season, it's all good and well having your best six months on the back end of two years. Yeah. But the third year, in my opinion, for a player that's at Pepe's level right now or stage, let me say, two years into a big money move, the yeah. third year is vital yeah. because the third year either builds upon this six months or it goes backwards and this six months was a flash in the pan and next summer we talk about selling him because as much yeah. as we say you are right looking at him now you could and I can see him in a top four challenging potentially title challenging side mm. with better resources around him mm -hmm. but at the same time yeah next this, season could just fall flat on the face and we, we have yeah. to move on this leads perfectly into Arteta's post-match press conferences talking about next season so Turkish be ready Let's get into what he's, what he's had to say. So he, so he was asked on whether we need to have a busy summer to compete next season. I'm sure we all agree that, he, that we do, but this is what he had to say. Um, first of all, we, we have to get our players better. Shocked me he said that, by the way. Um, more consistent and help them to improve. All our way of playing, our philosophy, I think, is in, in place. They buy into that and now is the moment to take it to the next level, to improve that and improve our consistency consistency because since December to now we've shown that we're the second or third best team in the league it's not enough but six months the level <laughs> is high six months says six months the level is high so we need to do that for 10 months okay just read it one more time please <laughs> so I'm just gonna go back to there's please, a bit please. Yeah. there's so many bits that there's so many bits here. so he says first of all we have to get our players better more consistent and help them to improve there's no getting them better Mikel but continue please <laughs> yep okay all all our way of playing, our philosophy, I think is in place, which is interesting. They buy into that and now is the moment to take it to the next level. Buy into what, bro? We're out of everything. <clears throat> what have they bought into? Where is he getting this from? I don't get it. To improve and improve our consistency because since December to now, we've shown that we're the second to third best team in the league. It's not good enough. That's not a misquote, no? No, that's, this, is, this is word shown, for word. This he is on said, the, we've the, shown we are the second third. Is that what he said, James? Just yeah. to clarify. Karen. Because he said Monroe before. I just want to no, make no, sure that's what he that. said. This is off the Arsenal website. This is the this, this transcript. So, yep, yeah, it's not enough. He says six months, is, the level is high. So, for six months, the level's been high. So, we need to do that for 10 months. That is mad. The guy's, you know, James, he's done. <clears throat> for me, he's done. Yeah. You know? And I know next season, I, I, can, I already know. James, you, you're going to be the opposite side of the fence where you're going to say, listen, it's a new season, he's here, we're going to have to support him. And I think Cecil will be in between in us between both. Will, yeah. But just know for me, be prepared next season. From game one, <laughs> he's, he's done. done. Because you couple them quotes up with, let's move on from the takeover. You couple them quotes up with, there's players on contracts, the players on contracts will be here next year. What are you talking about, my guy? Yeah. They're, they're in contracts, but you can sell them. But he's, I, I, he's you know what, he's actually... He's turned heel the last month. The, 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 the quotes, yeah, from the last month have been borderline delusional. Yeah. Slight, really concerning. Um, one of the reasons I wanted Emery sacked was because in press conferences, and this isn't an attack on his ability to speak English. I, I admired the way Unai Emery always tried to speak English. Um, but actually, it was just what he was trying to say. I, I couldn't get on board with. Games we'd lose, he said that, no, the game plan was perfect. And Arteta's having these levels of kind of like, Delusion, some of the things he's saying, you know, we're the, we've, been, we've proven we're the second or third best team for the last, what, five months. Well, yeah, re really? Really? Like, I, I, I can't. Man, he knocked out FA Cup by Southampton, who finished where in the league. Knocked out the Europa League by Villarreal, who finished where in the Spanish mm -hmm. league. Mm. We're not the second or third best team in this country. I don't care what you look at. Yeah. Look at the last day, if you want. I don't care. Yeah. There's no chance he's getting away with them comments. And I don't care what he does this summer. Yeah. A man like that, that's saying things like that, he's in bed with the owners. And if you're yeah, in bed is, with yeah. them, that bed needs to go out the window. All of you involved. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Well, listen, I, I think this isn't to defend him at all. I, I just think 
he probably knows that he wouldn't be a, in a job if it weren't for the Cronkies. Yeah, that's what Robbie said. And, I and he that. probably thinks it's a case of, you know what, if I want all the budget I'm going to get, all the backing, I've got to back them. I've got yeah. to back the Cronkies as much as I want them to back me. You know Which, what's funny? If I'm an owner that mm. actually cares, mm. yeah, let's say you're Arteta and I'm Cronkey, yeah. I'm not going to ask you to come out and chat rubbish to the fans, the same people that... Really? I've the Cronkies? Had, I think they would. But if I'm in a position where we're meant to believe in them now, yeah, yeah, he's, they're sitting there pressurising Arteta to come out with mm. comments like that, let's say. yeah, yeah. If you was an owner that's looking to change, you wouldn't do that. You would make sure the action speaks louder than words. Yeah. And the first couple of weeks of the window, you do some business. Mm. The next couple of weeks, some business. The last few weeks, more business. Mm -hmm. And then it's not necessarily Arteta coming out to talk shit to us. Mm -hmm. It's fans saying, well, look at the last few weeks. Look at mm. the window we've just had. Mm. You know, actions speak louder than words. As much as I we agree. want them to talk now, it's because they haven't showed any actions that we want them to talk. Yeah. Generally, I don't care about hearing from an owner. But them in particular, I need to hear from now because you've been quiet for so long. Mm. I, yeah, I hear that. No, I, agree. I, f I fully agree with that as well. I do fully agree. But there are more quotes that you're going to bring up. Or no, what? I was just going <laughs> to. I'm going to leave because I think we spent a lot of time on that one, and that was the, the that was the juicy yeah. one. I think we'll, we'll leave we'll leave it at that. I was going to just have a word on Odegaard. Um, me and James obviously was in the ground when he when he he spent a lot of time before leaving the pitch. Um, yeah. There was basically what happened was. The final whistle went and then the players went in um, and then they were, we got asked to stay because they're going to come back out. But he spent a lot of time on the pitch that first time when they went in, did a clap, clap in the middle of the circle. Then they went back in and then he come back out and then again spent quite a lot of time. And we believe that might be his goodbye. We don't 100% know, but it felt like he was kind of saying thank you. Um, it looked like it from the screen well, when and, I saw him subbed off. Yeah, and that's, how, that's kind of how it felt as well when we was there. So I just want to quickly say, Arteta did say on whether he's, if he, he got asked him whether he's confident that Odegaard will stay. He says, I don't know. It's not in our hands. I don't know. So it, for me... Unlikely. It's very unlikely. It's a real shame. I really like him. And he was class that, yeah. in that, He was brilliant well. today. Yeah. He was absolutely brilliant. I think him and Smith have a good understanding as well. Um, I think he's exactly the kind of player we need, especially when you've got a striker like Aubameyang, who's playing on the shoulder. Yeah, and yeah. Odegaard was finding him a lot mm. in that Brighton game. Um, I really want to keep him. I actually don't know if there are many options that are similar to him out there that are realistic. Yeah. He's a bit of a Bernardo Silva, but I, Bernardo Silva's obviously much better. But a lot of those players don't come around. Yeah. The comparisons to Ozil are fair, not in terms of level, in terms of style. Yeah. And, the and yeah, yeah, difficult to find. Mm. So, yeah, if we get a Buendia, I'd be very happy. But I think Buendia is more similar to. He's kind of. You, you said it yourself, he's a good hybrid yeah, of Odegaard yeah. and Smith Rowe. But something about Odegaard today, you felt he ran the game. That's something he can do. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and I, I would really like to see him. Um, I would like to see him back, at least for another loan. Madrid got to sort out what they're doing, um, but it would be he's great to have him a leader, back. that's what it is. Yeah, I think he is a, a bit of a lead. leader. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sometimes he yeah. doesn't need to talk, he just breathes. Plays, yeah. 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 He's, he's captain for his country, and, and, and just like you just said, he breeds it. Like there was He was just gliding. There was a, I remember the ball he did when he, he was before, um, he was in front of the defence line, and he scoops over yeah. to play a through. Well, I was thinking, Right, that was outrageous. Like he was, classy, he's so composed. Yeah. Comes out with moments of brilliant. Pepe second. Yep, this is for yeah. Pepe second as well. He has a, he's class. Mm. It's a shame. I hope I re like you said. I hope we get another loan out of him. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. yeah, I thought I thought, um, I thought Thomas Partey was excellent as well today. He played as more of a box to box. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, having Jack alongside him as the kind of the more disciplined of the midfielders, I thought Partey looked great. And yeah, I think you just shots. yeah, I think you just mentioned Louise there as well. Yeah. Um, Au revoir. Yeah, he's saying his goodbyes. Sayonara. Mm. I think... Arrivederci, where, where else is there? <laughs> I, yeah. like I wish there? you were in the ground. There. There, was, there was a moment. Adios. They, there was a moment they came back on and they did the... Oh. <laughs> Way! That's that they, they did that for Louise <laughs> to say goodbye. They did it a couple of times. I was like, if Turkish, I had a part was, of this. If Turkish was in the <laughs> ground... I had a part of this, Louise. One more time with me, James. Come I on. No. No. <laughs> I'm not David. I love you. No, Get no, me no. Your coaching stuff. No, David, David Louise. Come taking with you, man. <laughs> no, no. We are. I, I listen as well. David Louise. I think he's he's been great. He was great for us this season. Yeah, this ain't just to him. This is to yeah. everyone at Arsenal Football Club cool. right now. Cool, 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 yeah. cool. At least we made that clear. But yeah, that, that was a moment that Bloody if you was in the ground, I think you probably would have walked out. Actually, I definitely would have. <laughs> to be honest, when I saw Kronke there, I just imagined myself at the game. You know, lowest. Just looking up at Kronke the whole game instead. That's probably something I would have done. 
turned my back to the game and just looked up at him. Yeah. Because eventually someone would attack him and said, oh, that guy's fucking looking at you. Man. <laughs> he looks serious. <laughs> nah, because uh, I can't believe he was in the stadium and we didn't get the message across. But mm. it is what it is. It's, we move. Yeah. We move. On, on, on Louise, just very briefly, just to really rub it into um, Turkish's wounds. <laughs> um, listen, a lot of players can come at their 33, their career's done, they've won everything, and uh, just take a paycheck and just be done with it. Um, but I do feel, feel that despite all the errors, the red cards and the penalties and everything, uh, I feel like he actually did give his all to the club, in fairness. I don't think he came and just took a paycheck. Mm, I, agree. Yeah. I think he, he genuinely gave his all. Um, and it's time that, maybe not Arsenal fans, because he's not done it at Arsenal, but it's time the media start giving him credit for the career he's had. Mm. Um, because yes, at times he's been a bit of a clown yeah. with some of the decisions he's made, but find me many players have had a career like him in terms like of the Lewis. trophies he's won, mm. the clubs he's played for, um, what he's done internationally as well. Phen- yeah, phenomenal yeah. career. And just so as a character and a man as well, like he takes yeah. a lot of, when he got the abuse, he takes it. Yeah, like he any, takes it, it yeah, does. no stupid interviews, yeah. no, yeah, well, you know, he won good performance against Wolves and he's like, yeah, see, I've proven yeah. everyone yeah. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> now he wins the FA Cup and he's like, I owed that to the fans. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, big up that so yeah. No, I give him respect for that. Yeah, mm, I give him respect for that. He hasn't been the well, best for good. us, but yeah, he gets that yeah. as a parting gift. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not many players get positives from me now, but there you go. <laughs> there you what go. we got left? No conference league. Yeah, well, I mean, um, just a brief one on that. Um, I think I'm happy we've not got it. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Listen, yeah. Them, finishing yeah. above Tottenham isn't a celebration. It's normal, or yeah. so it should be. Yeah. It hasn't been recently. I know that, so it's not normal. Mm. But it doesn't mean because it hasn't in the last five years, I'm going to celebrate Word. it, especially considering it's seventh, eighth, eighth, ninth, yeah, yeah. fifth, sixth. It's embarrassing. Yeah. You know? And there's no trophy yeah. for it. There's no trophy yeah. saying, yeah, let we them got have the trophy. conference league. Yeah, there's no trophy saying we are, we're above Tottenham. They're debutants in that tournament. Genuinely, yeah. I'm, they're going to be laughed yeah. at in that tournament. Mm. And at the end of the day, now, the squad, the manager, the board, the owner, they're all in the firing line now. No yeah. European competition, only domestic. Yeah. Football, one transfer window. Let's see what you're all about. I know what you mean. It's very simple. It's a simple task. Yep. One window. There's one, one goal focus. next season. Yeah. And it should be top four. Yeah. It sounds mad now, but that's what I'm going that in. That doesn't with. sound mad, you top know. Top four. That doesn't sound it mad. It sounds mad when you think Chelsea, Man City, yeah. Liverpool and United. I know, but there's no excuse. Oh, they're, okay, part, yeah, apart from the quality of those that teams. That makes it sound have, mad. Yeah, they have. But every season... A couple, maybe one of the four teams that you expect to do well, don't do well. Mm. This year happened to be everyone not doing well. Let's hope next season we are the ones to capitalise off enough. Yeah, I agreed. say let's hope, but the it's opportunity now, will be there. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Let's see if this board want to finally do something about it. Good let's see, round up. Any last let's thoughts? See. Nah. That's it, yeah? No, that, it. This is the last show. Big last time head, for a yeah. while. Still high off the game. I can see James there still going. buzzing. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I'm just hoping I'm just hoping Cronky puts his hand in his pockets and brings Monroe to the to the Monroe. team. Oh, Come we're, on. we're not doing yeah. final digs. I'll do Monroe and bring Tom Holland in. We're not doing yeah. 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 I'm out. Uh, I'm out. No, it's it's <laughs> honestly, guys, just before final thoughts, it's been a pleasure having this show brought on board with you, Turk, as well, in it. Um, it's been I'm not great. I'm better than Robbie, man. It's calm. Just say it, man. It's calm, man. I know <laughs> bro, Robbie, he, he I talks too much him. sometimes. He bro. doesn't let you speak. Like, he's very, you know, condescending. Let's no, no, forget it, man. Yeah, it's Robbie. Just, James, you told me this love, earlier, mate. I love it here. Just you are great. Like I'm not going to yeah. say, yeah, yeah. Maybe. I love my job. Yeah, Turk, I mean, Robbie, you're, you're like here. Turk is just, just a little bit. It's cool, it's cool. Oh, so Robbie didn't tell you I'm your line manager yet, no? Let's wrap this up now, people. <laughs> no, but same way he no, no, I love to you, man, for making me feel comfortable coming in too. Because yeah. obviously, you, man, are younger than me as well. So mm. at first, I thought to myself, how would it work? But as the viewers have said and seen over the weeks, the chemistry's got better and, yeah, man. and so yeah, on. Yeah, it's been a lot of yeah. fun, man. Yeah. And people stop asking me why I didn't stop James going to the game. I was getting that in the chat downstairs on Curtis's channel. What do you want me to do? Carry him away from the stadium? <laughs> Now, if he buys a shirt, now that's the other thing. <laughs> that's what I might have to do. But people, this has been the full-time show, full-time for the season, whistleblowing, all of that. Let us know your thoughts and give us the rating for this season. That's what I want to see, the rating. Ooh. And if I see anything above a one, I might just block that person. <laughs> but love for the love, people, as always. Hit the like button, share, subscribe, do all of that. Peace. <laughs>